Have you ever wondered if Jesus actually himself claimed to be God? Well, if you have, you'll find your answer today in chapter 8. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. Hey guys, it's good, good, good to be with you another day. It's a beautiful day and a perfect day to turn together to the Lord and read the Bible together. Uh, I'm Darren. I'm a pastor in Red Bank, New Jersey, and I'm one of the hosts on this channel. Today we're going to be reading John chapter 8, some wonderful things in there. Uh, before we do, let's, let's take a moment and pray and acknowledge uh, the giver of this book to us. Dear Lord, we uh, ask you to be with us today. Lord, um, the stories that we see in this book of John seem so wild and, and unbelievable. We see you performing miracles on this earth, healing people and multiplying food. Uh, God, sometimes in our lives we... Um, we get discouraged when we don't see you working. Lord, I pray that you, um, that you give us eyes to see where you are moving and where you are working. I pray that you give us eyes to recognize how you provide for us. You are the, the provider. I also pray, Lord, that wherever we are, whatever we're going through, the difficulties in our lives, that uh, that you show up and you make yourself real, Lord. Uh, so many of us tune in from so many different places and so many different backgrounds. Uh, and, and wherever we are today, I just, I just pray for each of us that there's encouragement and peace. Uh, I pray that seeing you in this book uh, challenges us to follow you even better, to uh, want to know you even more. Uh, I pray that your spirit is with us as we read and you open our eyes to see, uh, to see you through your word. Amen. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At dawn, he went to the temple again, and all the people were coming to him. He sat down and began to teach them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery, making her stand in the center. Teacher, they said to, her, to him. This woman was caught in the act of committing adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They asked this to trap him in order that they might have evidence to accuse him. Jesus stooped down and started writing on the ground with his finger. When they persisted in questioning him, he stood up and said to them, The one without sin among you should be the first to throw a stone at her. Then he stooped down again and continued writing on the ground. When they heard this, they left one by one, starting with the older men. Only he was left with the woman in the center. When Jesus stood up, he said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, Lord, she answered. Neither do I condemn you, said Jesus. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. Jesus spoke to them again. I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will never walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. So the Pharisees said to him, You are testifying about yourself. Your testimony is not valid. Even if I testify about myself, Jesus replied, my testimony is true because I know where I came from and where I'm going. But you don't know where I come from or where I'm going. You judge by human standards. I judge no one. And if I do judge, my judgment is true because it is not I alone who judge, but I and the Father who sent me. Even in your law it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is true. I am the one who testifies about myself, and the Father who sent me testifies about me. Then they asked him, 
Where is your father? You know neither me nor my father, Jesus answered. If you knew me, you would also know my father. He spoke these words by the treasury while teaching in the temple, but no one seized him because his hour had not yet come. Then he said to them again, I'm going away. You will look for me and you will die in your sin. Where I'm going, you cannot come. So the Jews said to him, He won't kill himself, will he? Since he says, Where I'm going, you cannot come. You are from below, he told them. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. Therefore, I told you that you will die in your sins. If you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Who are you? They questioned. Exactly what I've been telling you from the very beginning. Jesus told them, I have many things to say and to judge about you, but the one who sent me is true, and what I have heard from him, these things I tell the world. They did not know he was speaking to them about the Father. So Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he, and that I do nothing on my own, but just as the Father taught me, I say these things. And the one who sent me is with me, He has not left me alone, because I always do what pleases him. As he was saying these things, many believed in him. Then Jesus said to the Jews who who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you really are my disciples. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. We are descendants of Abraham, they answered him, and we have never been enslaved to anyone. How can you say you will become free? Jesus responded, Truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. A slave does not remain in the household forever, but a son does remain forever. So if the son sets you free, you really will be free. I know you are descendants of Abraham, but you are trying to kill me because my word has no place among you. I speak what I have seen in the presence of the Father, So then, you do what you have heard from your father. Our father is Abraham, they replied. If you were Abraham's children, Jesus told them, you would do what Abraham did. But now you are trying to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You're doing what your father does. We weren't born of sexual immorality, they said. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me because I came from God and I am here. For I didn't come on my own, but he sent me. Why don't you understand what I say? Because you cannot listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he tells a lie, he speaks from his own nature, because he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Who among you can convict me of sin? If I am telling the truth, why don't you believe me? The one who is from God listens to God's words. This is why you don't listen, because you are not from God. The Jews responded to him, Aren't we right in saying that you're a Samaritan and have a demon? I do not have a demon, Jesus answered. On the contrary, I honor my father and you dishonor me. I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it and judges. Truly I tell you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. Then the Jews said, Now we know you have a demon. Abraham died, and so did the prophets. You say, if anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died, and the prophets died? You, who do you claim to be? If I glorify myself, Jesus answered, my glory is nothing. My father, about whom you say, he is our God, he is the one who glorifies me. You do not know him, but I know him. 
If I were to say I don't know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He was he saw it and was glad. The Jews replied, You aren't fifty years old, yet you've seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him. But Jesus was hidden and went out of the temple. John's chapters are long. Actually, most of the chapters in uh, all of the Gospels are actually pretty long. Um, and of course, John's is one of those. And uh, since it takes so long to get through the reading, uh, as we're doing this day to day, sometimes it... Um, it makes more sense for us to focus in on a, a short idea or a topic rather than try to cover the whole book, the whole cha- the whole chapter. I mean, uh, and and today is one of those days. There's a short little idea in here that I really don't want us to miss. So we're just going to look at that. Um, it's it's very two very small words, uh, but they're overwhelmingly powerful. In fact, they're so small that together these two words add up to only three letters. Uh, can you guess what those words are? Well, if you guessed I am, then you are right. In various chapters throughout this book, we see Jesus say things like, I am the bread of life, or uh, I am the light of the world, or I am the resurrection and the life. And if anyone has been unsure that uh, he was making these claims about himself uh, to be divine, this chapter really puts that question uh, to rest. Jesus tells us that, uh, tells the, in in the story, Jesus says that before Abraham was, I am. We see this absolute I am reference uh, in chapter six, a couple chapters ago, we see it here in chapter eight, and then later in 18, Now, not only is Jesus saying that before Abraham was, he was. So he's not just trying to claim that he's over 2,000 years old and that he existed before Abraham did. Uh, But the the expression, I am, is uh, ego eimi. And and that's the the Greek for it. And um, this is actually the name that uh, Yahweh, the God of the Old Testament, uh, it's the same God, but in the Old Testament, he calls himself Yahweh. He, he gave himself this identity in Exodus 3. He says, I am who I am. Uh, so the, saying I am is a clear reference for, for the Jews to their God. And um, so Jesus wasn't just claiming to be preexistent to Abraham, but he's claiming to be the person that spoke to Moses in that scene in Exodus at the burning bush. He is the I am. Uh, he's saying that he's God himself. And uh, if you think that's a stretch, just if you, don't, if you don't quite see what I'm talking about, just look at the response. The opponents, what they do is they pick up stones to stone him, which uh, stoning was a punishment for blasphemy. So if a man was claiming to be God, certainly this was blasphemy. And their response, kind of understandable, they're ready to stone him. Uh, but of course, Jesus, uh, this, with Jesus, this was not blasphemy. This was truth. And this is one of the central interpretive themes of the whole Bible. That God himself came down to earth as the son, as the man, Jesus, who while being God, took upon himself the form of a servant, humbled himself even to the point of death, death on a cross. And, and he did this to pay the price for the sin of mankind for you and me, uh, to provide a way for us to find hope and peace and restoration for eternity. That's the big story of the Bible And that is what Jesus' claims today are all about. In this chapter, he he puts to rest any doubt that he really thought he was God. 
and uh, his opponents didn't like that too much. My question for you today is this. If, if Jesus is really God, well, we have two choices. Either he's, he's crazy uh, for thinking he's God, or he really is God. He can't just be a good teacher. Either he's a, a madman or he's divine. And if Jesus is really divine, what should our response be to him and to what he calls us to? And, and if, if Jesus is really God, we have this picture of Jesus, this picture of God as a man displayed for us in, in these Gospels. We should want to learn as much about him and know him as much as we can. That's why we read every day, and hopefully more than just this time. I, I challenge you today to revisit these chapters as we read them. Go back and read them over later, and maybe find books about them, or uh, if you need recommendations, we'll give you some. But just spend time in the Word. Take your time. Go through it slowly. Take your lunch break or before bed to revisit these pages and see Jesus through the eyes of John. And uh, as you get to know him better, your life will be richer. I I guarantee it. All right. I love you guys, and uh, we will see you all next time. Bye.